All right, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. In my Friday Reads videos, I share a little bit about how my reading is going, including what I've finished, what I've started, and what I am carrying over with, carrying over with week to week? Carrying over week to week. There's no with there. Is there? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, so a little bit about what I finished, what I started, and what I'm carrying over. And I picked two titles for each of those categories to talk about. And let's start, as always, with the finishes. So I finished Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. This is translated with an introduction by Bernard O'Donoghue. Not sure if that's how you pronounce that. Full information will be, as always, down below. Um, this was actually a reread for me. I read this several years ago, but I decided to pick it up again because I watched the film The Green Knight, uh, which um, stars Deb Patel as Gawain, and the it came out at the end of last year. I did really enjoy the film. I will make note that it is much more of a sort of atmospheric, mythic character journey type of film, then a lot of Arthurian adaptations tend to be more action-oriented and fight sequences and epic and that kind of stuff. Like, it's epic, but in a different way. So um, it's a much more contemplative pace, shall we say. I did really enjoy it, though, but it's I don't think it's going to be for everyone. Um, but um, yeah, so I watched it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting adaptation of the work, but it also made me go, hmm, I don't remember exactly how this worked or that worked. And there was one thing in particular that I'm like, oh, I remember this part, but I remember it a little bit differently. And it was a little bit different, which is one of the reasons I think truly that I wanted to um, re reread it so I did reread it it's only the the work itself is only about 70 and 80 pages and the person <laughs> I got it from bookends and um it's actually uh someone has a, <laughs> like made notes in it so <laughs> including one note right at the very end that I was like huh <laughs> like I did not pick up and actually no they Oh, the, um, okay, I'm going to show it to the screen. So this is the very, very end of the book. But they, I think they translated it, like, because there's a notation at the back, like, the last line is uh, not in English. And I think they translated this. So this will spoil the ending. So don't look if you don't want to see it. Um, but, so it's in another language. And then that is, I imagine, a translation or perhaps it's their interpretation of the theme of the story. So anyway, so it was kind of interesting. There's been several times where I have read books with, I usually don't get books that have writing in them, but it's kind of like a non-linear buddy read because you're seeing what someone else thinks throughout the story. And I actually found that kind of fascinating this time around, maybe also because it was a reread. I already have formed my own opinions on it. Um, anyway, so I did enjoy it. Um, and it did, it did clarify the thing because I was trying to explain it to my sister and her husband how there was one thing that I felt like um, was a little bit different. And it was a little bit different. And I'd forgotten more than I, I thought I had. And I already knew I had forgotten a fair amount. It's been several years. <laughs> Anyway, it was an enjoyable reread. It actually is quite a good work. There is some stuff that, oh, it would be spoilery to say, there. it's not perfect um, in terms of, um, like, almost nothing is, but there was something that was kind of like, oh, do we really have to go there? Which is something that bothers me a lot, but given that this is from a while ago, <laughs> it's not that surprising, but it was that uh, slightly disappointing. Um, it was a gender thing, um, but uh, as it <laughs> so often is in terms of disappointing, but other than that, I think it was a, it's a really interesting work. I'm glad that I reread it. Um, I enjoyed it, and now I, I want to watch the movie yet again. So it's, and the, the movie has, um, also has uh, Sean Harris in it, and uh, Joel Edgerton and Alicia, I never know how to pronounce her last name, Vic, Vikander, um, and, uh, and of course Deb Patel. So it's an interesting adaptation and a, I would say quite a 
ambitious adaptation. I thought it was an interesting thread of the story. And um, so yeah, so that was that. Also, I read, okay, so this has a clown on it. So anyone who doesn't want to see clowns, look away. And I will only show the cover for a moment because it is quite, quite clowny. And so for the cover of this one, we have Goosebumps Most Wanted by R.L. Stein, of course. This is A Nightmare on Clown Street, which is the seventh in the most wanted series. Okay, I'm now going to show the back. The clown has gone back in the box. Um, so this is um, just a random pickup that I got from the library. Um, and uh, I finished the Goosebumps series earlier this year. And I really do enjoy reading them for very quick reads um, and quick stories. This was fun. It follows a kid whose uncle said like come visit me at the circus. Uh, it's a clown. It's a clown only circus. <laughs> And his uncle is a clown at the circus, and he says, you know, come visit for the summer and be part of the circus. So he goes, and, it, like, there's a lot of clown <laughs> chaos. It's, there's, it's all clowns all the time. So if you don't like reading about clowns, I would not recommend this. I will say that I was surprised. This one's written more recently uh, than most of the... So this is from 2015, and that threw me out of it a little bit because there were like cell phones and stuff like that and references to that. I'm I'm used to the goosebumps from the I guess nineties where it there there really isn't a lot of tech. Like someone one of the ones I read, someone was using their PC and I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's what they were like then. <laughs> so um it, it, there's only a couple mentions to cell phones, so it's not huge. So anyway, this is fun. This was a recent pickup from the library. I did my first library haul. Um, uh, it's already been posted. And uh, yeah, so I'm just working through my library book. So those are two of the things that I finished. One of the ones I started it is also from the library, and it is One Hot New York Night by Melanie Milburn. This is a contemporary romance from the Harlequin Presents line sleepless in Manhattan. So I've only just started this. I think I've read just, yeah, I've just read the first chapter and it follows a woman who is a tech, I can't even remember. She's a business person. <laughs> That's all I really Advertising executive is, yeah, who wants to forget her ex and then there's a business rival and they're away at the same conference or something like that. So this is going to be a love a hate to love situation, but I will admit, like, I've only read, like, 20 pages, and not even, because it starts on page seven, and I think she's mentioned, like, four times already that she would never be with this person as she continues to describe him physically again and again to herself, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so, um, uh, I, this has one of the tropes that I'm, or not tropes, it just has one of the setups that I'm not a huge fan of, where he's a, like someone who is surrounded by women all the time, and she has been abstaining, you know, since her ex was mean or something like that. And that dynamic, I just, I find it like, I don't know what the right way, right term to put to that is. Like, I don't know, I just feel like it's used a lot. Um, variations on that. Uh, and uh, I just not a big fan. Anyway, but this one is set in a city, which is why I thought I would be more interested. A lot of the presents are more uh, they, 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 the stories and the settings are ones that normally appeal to me, but this one was a uh, city set, so I thought I would give it a go. But so far, it's mostly her talking about not being interested, but obviously being interested. So <laughs> we'll see how things pick up from that one. Um, I also started another romance, which I didn't really mean to because I don't try and read multiples from the same genre. I meant to start an urban fantasy, but this, and so, and I started this, but it's very much more of a romance and actually you can see probably just from the title because it's heart of the wolf i mean seriously that's gonna not that i ever thought this wasn't gonna be paranormal romance but i meant to start an urban fantasy but i started this instead so heart of the wolf by terry spear it's the first in the heart of the wolf series this one i'm reading because um later on in the series there is a title that was one of the vaginal title vaginal fantasy picks um, for their book club. I can't remember if it was the alt pick or the main pick, um, but uh, yeah. And so, and this one follows, it's uh, werewolf shifters um, and it follows a woman who was a lone wolf, but part of a pack. And then, um, but the alpha is a big jerk and she's fallen for one of the other guys. 
and uh, but then runs away. So that's I've only both of these I've only read the first chapter. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? See, this is why I end up having the currently reading challenge, because it's like I started two romances like literally on the same day. I'm like, what, right at the end of the month. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Anyway, so um, and neither of these are super speaking to me, so I don't know what's going to happen. I think I'll prioritize a little bit this one because I have to return it to the library and it's a little shorter. Um, but this one I, I'm reading for one of my challenges. It's a prereq for one of my challenges. So but I'm not loving it as well. She's very much pining for someone in the pack. Also, the the alpha of the pack that she was in had um, made aggressive advances towards her. That's like the nicest way to put it. Um, and so, I don't know. I feel like one of the challenges I have with, unfortunately, with paranormal shifter romances is there seems to be a lot of um, violence in them and um, or threat towards women or needing to be there to continue the bloodline. So if you have any paranormal rec paranormal romance recommendations, especially shifters that don't have those themes, I would love to hear them because it just, I feel like every, especially shifter and especially wolf shifters seems to be that's sort of like the underlying tone of it or things that happen. And I'm like, why is there always violence in paranormal romance? I don't get it. <laughs> like, I just don't understand why there needs to be threat of violence in 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 a romance novel i'm just not not interested for that so anyway i don't think there will be any violence in this one although there is a she's trying to forget her ex okay so hopefully there won't be an ex stalker situation because that happens a lot in suspense I generally don't read romantic suspense anyway. So hopefully one of those will pick up in chapter two <laughs> and we'll see where that goes. Although, no, the wolf, Heart of the Wolf, I read the prologue in the first chapter and one hot New York night, I only read the first chapter. So trying not to, I'm trying to, I will read more before I decide for sure about how I feel about them. I still can't believe I started like to right at the end of the month. Anyway, it's okay. Um, and then in terms of what I am carrying on with, I am continuing to read Les Miserables. Of course, I have started the fourth section. I realize this is quite <laughs> a very strange picture that I chose for the cover. I needed five covers because it's in five parts. Um, but I've started the fifth part. I've hit my uh, goal already for the week. I'm going for 25 pages a week and I'm hoping to finish. Um, my plan is to finish by the end of the year. So this one will be around a lot. Um, the beginning of the section is just sort of setting stuff up and it, they usually, the beginnings of the sections often are sort of more like historical context and stuff like that, socio-political stuff, so I'm still in sort of that realm of things. I have no idea what characters it's even going to be following. So, but I will continue to be reading that. And also, carrying over from the Currently Reading Project, I am continuing with Battle Royale by um, Koshan Takami, translated by Yuji Onaki. I am well, I'm getting well, well into it. The end is in sight. Um, my plan is to finish... Uh, I don't, I don't have a calendar near me soon, <laughs> maybe uh, next week. Um, and um, I'm not quite going at the pace that I was going during the currently reading challenge. I've slowed down a little bit, um, but I am continuing on with it. And uh, it is tough. Like it's, I find it hard. I with a lot of these. I think my within the clown one, my big complaint has been the violence. I just not really interested in reading about violence. Although the clown one did have violence, but it's a kids horror book. It doesn't seem realistic at all. But it actually had a lot of violence in it. Anyway, it just feels differently when it's sort of more realistic. But this is because Battle Royale is it has a. Um, I don't, and, and I said this, I think, in one of my wrap-up videos, I don't know how realistic it's supposed to be. Like, it's supposed to, I feel like it's sort of veiled as opposed to, in ter veiled in terms of where it is or what it's saying. Um, and uh, I, I'm like, it's certainly not promoting violence or anything like that. But it's, um, but there is a fair amount of violence. And the, the section that I most recently read was pretty intense. So I am going to be very happy to be done with this one. Um, it has been a rocky ride. Some of it I found really interesting um, and really engaging. It, it, and it's a lot about character and what what people will do in extreme situations. I think for me, I think that's sort of more what it's exploring as opposed to just showing extreme situations. 
maybe, I don't know, it's a little early to say, but I'm close, I'm like 130 pages, so wow, I'm really, I'm really gonna do it, I'm really gonna finish it, oh my gosh, <laughs> that is gonna be like, honestly, this is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR, and after all this, will I watch the movie? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And that's how I heard about it was actually the movie, it being such an extreme sort of like horror cult classic, you know, it's like hit that sort of cult classic status, but it was a contemporary work. And that's pretty rare. And um, I just it was one of those ones that everyone I knew had seen it and just talked so much about it. And uh, I felt like the the odd person out. So here we are over 10 years later, I'm finally reading the book. So I may or may not watch the movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh, do I hold on to working on my lists too long? <laughs> I don't even know. Anyway, so that's sort of like what I have been reading recently, what I've been working on. Um, I do have, I am going to be doing a TBR video for June that should go up, I think on Sunday. Um, try, still trying to figure out what I want my schedule to be for videos this summer, but I am thrilled to be back to doing Friday Reads. I really enjoy doing them. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone who responded on my library uh, haul video on whether or not wanted to see and continue to see Friday Reads um, as well as library hauls or enjoy one or the other or enjoy them both. Um, because I think uh, I am going to be going to the library again. It was so exciting to go. And I've read at least two, I think the three, three, they're all kids books that I finished. I picked mostly short stuff because it was still in the um in the middle of the currently reading challenge towards the end of the currently reading challenge. Anyway, that's what I have been reading recently. Ha what have you been reading recently? Have you seen The Green Knight? Have you read uh, Sir Gawain and The Green Knight? And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's on here in Canada. It's on uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, uh, and. Uh, I thought it was really, it was really interesting, and, um, but I just, it's, it's pretty, well, it, as I said, I think how I described it before is, is, I don't have more to add to that, but, uh, yeah, it was a really interesting watch, and, um, I'm really thrilled that I, I reread the story, and, put the pieces together <laughs> and I was kind of like how did that go oh I could have just looked it up but no it didn't take that long to read I read it within a week so anyway now I am rambling so I will be back soon with uh TBR for June and we shall see where things go from there because I, I don't even know <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching